what's up? We want to say shout out to our sponsors, Watchman Cigar, Red Hill Brewing, Crave Bath and Body, and our newest sponsor, Level Up Logo. Without you guys, this episode would not be possible. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. While you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. Our special guest this week is Nancy Picard. She is a certified integrative coach through the Ford Institute for Transformational Training and the Levine Life Coach Academy. She's the author of the internationally bestseller, Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage, and Transform Your Life. As we continue our series uh, this this month of how to make 2022 a better month or a better year. But, I mean, if we just made 20, 2022 a better month, I guess we'd be doing all right. Uh, <laughs> let, let me go ahead and introduce you to our starting lineup. Magic Man is being whisked away somewhere uh, by some strong winds and some rain. So he's not joining us tonight. But alas, we will hold down the fort here with uh, the. Uh, Wonderful, beautiful Aaron Waller. What up, Aaron? Hi. How are uh, you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> good. Uh, of course, we've got our producer, Brian. The wonderful, beautiful producer, Brian. So I, 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 I thought mean, you were going to introduce me that way. Is it going to I'm, I'm like slightly <laughs> offended. I just want to say I, that. I really wanted to, but <laughs> I, I, afraid, I was afraid HR might have something to say about that. So we have HR. You know. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'll be your illustrious host, Biggin. And how about you? Still struggling through this throat thing, so uh, we'll just we'll just go through it. It's only been like you know, eighteen months, right? Well, you know, it should ease off somewhere tail end of March is where I'm really kind of looking for oh. that voice to come back. So not much longer. Mm. So that's good. Uh, Producer Brian, can you tell our folks where they can find us on the webs? We're on the webs, um, everywhere. Well, we're all over the web, right? Uh, you can all find us on our website at uh, sfpradio.com. Uh, we've even got a nice little picture. Look at that. Right. Antsy schmancy. Hey, yeah, there. go ahead. So we have a website. Uh, there's a little, uh, lots of new features on this thing, right? So you can see the yeah, show. You buddy. can listen directly from the website if you want to. There's a little... Um, icon at the bottom to leave voicemails which we're going to get to yeah, in boy. just a second um but you know we're, we're all over the the socials so yeah you can get us uh facebook.com slash southern fried philosophy twitter yep. slash sfp radio instagram sfp radio yep. tiktok there's a ton of content on tiktok oh wait none uh, of it is ours though. <laughs> <laughs> yes um, i really want to break into the tiktok yeah do you know where else you can find us um, I know where you can't find us, and those oh. are the adult websites. So don't don't go there trying to find us. It's only a That's matter of time. Not a place to go. But where you can find us, oh, and this is new. Only fans. We're not there. Mm. We'll get there. Not yet. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> we need more followers. I think we should start an OnlyFans account and just have pictures of biscuits and then butter just melting on top oh, of it. And then, yeah, I mean it's that. A, it's yeah, food mm, ASMR. I'd watch that. To be honest with you. <laughs> Someone but, might be into it. You never know. <laughs> you never know. I, I would pay for it. I'm I'm not lying. Uh, yeah, but you can uh, actually find us at youtube.com slash Southern Fried Philosophy. Ooh, if you can believe it. it. We it did is. it. We did it. Yay. You did it. Our wonderful fans. It took you six years <laughs> to get us 100, uh, 100 plus viewers but we finally made it youtube.com forward slash southern fried philosophy um look we just dropped a video if you're unaware uh we uh producer brian and i teamed up with the bearded home cook um check out his information at the bearded hope cook.com or he also has a youtube channel um and we've got the links on on our um 
on our video to his stuff. But we teamed up with him. He makes amazing recipe videos on how to make stuff. And so I thought, well, hey, what if we partner with him? We can show you how to make Southern staples. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it would be it'd be fun. So I roll up thinking I'm just going to be the comedy relief. And uh, Jim is going just to do his, his, Jim, his beard at home cook thing. And uh, he's like, oh, no, we're not doing that. You guys are making the biscuits. And so <laughs> it is quite the ordeal. If you haven't gone to see the video, check it out at youtube.com forward slash Southern Fried Philosophy. Um, I tell you what, I mean, the biscuits are legit. Mm-hmm. Gravy's legit. Everything mm-hmm. was perfect. So we'll be teaming up with him to make some other ones coming up. So I'm very excited about that. So that was cool. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. Uh, if you would like to. Aaron, would you like to be part of the sh- the, the chefery going on? There? I mean, I was wondering. I was like, where was I invited? <laughs> you was... you kind of weren't on the show yet. So <laughs> okay. now. So this was pre recorded. N- this was, yes. Um, like the week I before say, you came on. <laughs> yeah, it was the week before. You were, technically, you were on vacation because it was that week that you were, again, on vacation. Um, but I'll, should, should we give a teaser of what the next video is going to be oh. we, what we think it's going to be or if we decide oh yeah that would be good maybe you guys can guess what it's mm-hmm. going to be so tweet us facebook us instagram us what have you uh what you think the next video should be or maybe there's a video that you're like hey i really want to know how to make fill in the blank and we'll talk to jim maybe we can make it happen so that'd be cool yeah um so one thing that that producer Brian mentioned was the voicemail feature on our site. And so producer Brian, can you bring up it, again? This is a podcast. I get it. You can't see it. Yes. But if you go to youtube.com forward slash on the fire philosophy, you can see it well, on the this YouTube is on SFP radio.com. Don't uh, the voicemail, right? The voicemail. Yeah. But yes. if, if you're not able to see what we're talking about oh, right. as we speak, yeah. Do that. Anyway, yeah, go to yeah. sfpradio.com. The little uh vo- the little microphone at the bottom of the page. Mm-hmm. That's where you click on it. It'll bring up a screen and then you can you can leave a voicemail. So that'd be handy dandy. Um so we're doing a thing now where uh within the next two more weeks, we're gonna we're gonna keep it over for two more weeks. If you leave a voicemail uh and it's funny, we're gonna give you a twenty dollar Amazon gift card for the funniest voicemail that gets left i really want to push this voicemail feature i think it's awesome um and again you can talk about anything i don't care what you talk about just leave a voicemail just vent burn whatever burns your biscuits just talk about it i don't care um but we're going to give a 20 dollars amazon gift card to the winner of that uh our fan uh shorty's barbecue uh won the 10 dollar gift certificate for mm. just being the first one. Y'all, I, I'm realizing that our audience cares very little about money. They mm. they really don't care because we try to give away money. I've begged you all just to try to win money and you don't do it. Mm. So I don't know what we're going to have to do. So if you guys have uh, any thoughts on what we could do to motivate you besides cash money, I don't know. Maybe a free month of my OnlyFans account? I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, L- uh, Lee Short re- suggested a barbecue only fans. Okay, all right, I'd be fine with that. Sure. Uh, all right, so we want to say shout out to our listeners from Nevada. Uh, since Magic Man is not here, we will have no fun facts about Nevada. But uh, Las Vegas, I mean, that's where Vegas is at. Have you guys been to Vegas? No. No, I've not no. been. No. I know hmm. you have. I have. Yeah. Yeah. That was quite a surprise for my 40th birthday. My wife just said, get on a plane and we're leaving. And we ended up in Vegas. So that was quite, quite a fun adventure and a trip. So, hmm. I think if yeah. I would go to Vegas and then like leave town and go like see the Grand Canyon or something. Well, we actually That's what did I was gonna say, see the Grand Canyon. <laughs> we saw the Hoover Dam, saw the dam. So, you know. Nice. There, you know, I think one of the cool things about Vegas is the downtown, not the actual strip, but to go to the downtown part, there's a lot of history down there, and I like that kind of stuff. So we did a walking tour. Highly recommended. That was that was fun. 
Uh, all right, so I'm going to ask you guys like I ask you every week. How you be doing? Brought to you by Crave Bath and Body. Aaron, what's been going on with you? Uh, nothing much. <laughs> Just <laughs> like everything else and I'm going to be like, um, work. That's all I do is work yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I did have a day off today and Ooh. I got my nails done. So that was really fun. <laughs> Fancy. I got nails. Let's see. What, they are, what are they? Oh. 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 If you can't see it, because this is the podcast. You, yeah, right? you realize they don't—they don't match, right? They're all different. And then that... one nail has hurts. Ooh, <laughs> that's fancy. I—I I have no nails. Like I just bite them off. <laughs> oh, I don't either, that? and that's why I have to get these because I. Oh. Uh, they're constantly breaking off. So. Oh, so you don't have to? They're like they put them on your your nails. Yes. Oh, they're acrylic. That's fancy. Well, they're a tip with acrylic. Oh, yeah. Hmm. There's- See things we we never would have talked about before. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I was like, should I talk about my nails? Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Let's talk about it. Why not? <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm extremely fascinated. At some point, we'll talk about is is eyelashes. That it. I'm so like that's a whole nother world. Mesmerized by YouTube. eyelashes. I was thinking earlier. I was like, we could do a YouTube video where I like teach you guys how to do makeup. Yes. <laughs> and, and then there we go. And you do the makeup the on us. Oh, that would be awesome! <laughs> wow. So, okay, it. we would get a whole nother really crew. Well. Yeah, no doubt. So, so speaking it. of nails, how do people function? So, like, you know, you go to the grocery Ooh. store, mm. and you know, there's a girl there checking you out, and like. Not like and looking how do you at push you. Like, like oh, I can't boy. imagine. Like, how do you open a soda can when you got that on your? Like, I don't. How do you function? I get they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> how do you function? <laughs> <laughs> you just figure it out. Uh, oh. There is actually a trend on TikTok for a minute because um, I'm deeply into TikTok, um, <laughs> where this girl had like the longest nails, like so long. And she was showing how she did everyday things like hmm. getting gas or opening a can of soda or, you know, using the bathroom, <laughs> all this stuff. Oh, my. She didn't show that, but she showed sure, no, I understand the okay. process. And it was really fascinating. I was like, okay, I can't do anything. I still get them. I don't get them wow. super long, but, <laughs> you know, as long as I can handle them. <laughs> the the thing that I when I see that I'm like the first thing every time that comes to my mind is how do you pick your nose with that thing like oh. it's got to be you have to have this weird angle thing going on I don't know yeah, that's that's the one thing that I'm like how do you do that so well good I like your nails they're cute thanks or as my wife will say cool is that cool. cute cool thank you <laughs> producer Brian how you been doing? Cutie. Cutie. Uh, I, I think I'm getting old. No I think I, I think things are happening. Like <laughs> I don't quite understand. Like maybe you're a little bit. You're a couple years older than me, so maybe you can sure. help me wrap my head around this. So yeah. I'm just like walking around my bedroom last night, and then my ankle yeah. just fails, yep. like for <laughs> no reason. I'm just walking, and it just like, yeah. oh, now I'm limping. Why am I limping? Like, <laughs> my body parts are just quitting on me without there's like there's no two weeks notice there's no like <laughs> any kind of uh there's no way to guess what's about to happen it's just you know like the, the day happened last night and then today the, the i'm standing at the stove like making pasta and then uh, my knee just goes like oh my knee hurt like I'm, i wasn't even moving yeah i'm just like my uh, maybe it's the weight gain or something, but, but well, there's probably has some to do with it, but but most of it is getting old. I woke up this morning and my my wrist hurt. Here's here's where you know you've passed the part of like thinking that you're old to knowing where you're old, is when you go to bed and then you wake up and something else hurts. Right, like how did I injure my forehead in the middle of the night? Like how did this how did this happen? Why is this hurting? Yeah. And then, and then you gingerly get out of bed because you have no idea what's about to happen. It's it's almost like a a horrible choose your own adventure uh, thing. Like which knee should I put pressure on and which one shouldn't? Yeah. Um. And then 
don't don't talk to me about trying to hit the hole uh, in the middle of the night when you're trying to like go to the bathroom. At this point, <laughs> it's reverted to having to sit down because oh, no. I just I don't care anymore. I'm I'm too tired. I'm too whatever. So I swear, yeah, getting old is. I mean, everything's uh, going to start hurting. It's horrible. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, I've, you know, said for many years, I think what should happen is at the beginning of, you know, you gra- graduate from college, trade school, what have you. The government then at that point should give you 10 years and pay for whatever you want to do for 10 years. Here you go. Let's go. Do whatever mm. you want to do. But then after those 10 years, you have to work until you die because that's when mm. you can have fun instead and, of the then, other way around. Right. Yeah. Where you, you used to retire and you get, you know, you can barely move. Yeah. What are you going to do there? Like, well, this is fun. I'm going to crosswords sit down and watch Fox news and wordle all day. All right. That sounds like a game plan. <laughs> uh, so how you be doing? I'm good. My, my little small batch has, has done this sleep regression thing. Are you familiar with L sleep, sleep regression also yeah. known as El Diablo? Uh, uh, yeah. That's what they for. Yeah. <laughs> it and is hellacious. Yeah. And in the middle of the night, she'll, we'll put her down at seven 30 normal bedtime. And then at 10 30, she decides I'm going to scream for a little while. And then, and then she'll go back to sleep. Probably it takes about an hour. And then at one o'clock, all of a sudden, like the cell phone co- blows up. She gets a text saying it's party time. And now it's party time in the USA. And she is wide awake, screaming, yelling, jumping. We have a camera and we were watching her. And at some point last night, I swore, I swore to the good Lord that her head went around 180 and stared back at me. And, <laughs> and she vomited everywhere. And, and then just and the next thing I know is to turn around. She's asleep. Like what the heck just happened? So demon child sleep progression is horrible. Cause you just have gotten to the point where like, Oh, we're golden. We're just going to sleep through the night. Everything's perfect. And then, and then that crap happens. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't, I, think I hate you, life. Uh, that's impressive. What's happening over there. I remember kids waking yeah. up. There was some noise and then they just went back to sleep. Right? Yeah, no, it's 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 a rock show. I it, mean, well, I, eventually, it, when you get to the my kids' age, you start having bad dreams, so they'll just yeah. wake up for that. And you know. yeah, at some point, and we'll, we'll have a discussion. I know this discussion is coming with therapy. I get it, but I walked into her room, and you'll probably you might have to bleep this out. I just said, I looked her in the eye, and I said, "Sit your <laughs> down. I'm tired of this." <laughs> So it was. It was just a. It was a long night. It was a very long night. Wow. Uh, um, all right. So we're going to go to our southern phrase of the week. Uh, it's no bigger than a minnow in a fishing pond. When you arrive at the banks of the fishing pond on Saturday morning, you're hoping for a good catch, enough to uh, big enough to get a catfish to eat and fry for the family on Saturday night. And if you find yourself only seeing minnows. They look even smaller compared to the heavy catch that you hope for. No bigger than a minnow in a fishing pond is as tiny as can be. So you may hear mm-hmm. that, you know, he's no no bigger than a minnow in a fishing pond. So you may hear that in the old southern dialect. Yep. Uh, all right. So we mentioned, we mentioned some voicemails that were left. So uh, we said that Lee Short... Shorty's Barbecue had uh, the winning first round voicemail. So I wanted to go ahead and play some of these voicemails so you guys can, can kind of hear what, uh, what kind of fun stuff we're getting. <laughs> All right, here's, here's the first one here. Hey, guys, this is Shorty's Barbecue congratulating you on your new season of the podcast. Although I was promised Jay Z on the last episode, and I got some Never said that. white guy, I'll forgive you for that. Anyways, looking forward to seeing what you guys have this year on Three Old Fat Guys Radio. <laughs> keep it up, keep up the good work, and let's Sorry, go uh, roll smoke. 
<laughs> oh, I feel like uh, we, yeah. we missed some branding there. We, yeah, definitely. I like that. I always say at the end of the show, keep looking up because I, it was at the very beginning of the show, I had my grandma on the show and I asked her, I said, grandma, if you could say one, you know, what's the last thing that you would tell people? She always said, she said, keep looking up. So that's why I always use that at the end, but I still, I like let's roll some smoke, but uh, you know, for grandma, I'll keep saying, keep looking up. So there's that. Uh, and Aaron, he said that when before you were on, so that it's no no thing to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll go to right. our second. We'll, right. we'll go to our second voicemail. Here's our second voicemail. Hey, this is Sketch from a uh, Cut and Shoot. I'm uh, glad to hear Aaron on the show, bringing a woman's perspective and giving y'all some of that celebrity tea. I just wonder if you're going to talk about the latest big separation. I mean, big. Uh, I just, I can't believe they split up. Especially <laughs> after all the crap they've been through. If you don't know who I'm talking about, hit your butt cheeks. Bye. Wait. All right. I don't know. What was the very end? Did he say pinch your butt cheeks? It's your butt cheeks. It's your butt cheeks. It's, What's my it's, butt cheeks? It's, uh, uh, hold on one second. It's my butt cheeks. The joke is, I can't believe they're still together after all the crap they've been through. Uh, it's uh, your butt cheeks. Yeah. Okay. Aaron, yeah. so one, we, you already got a fan, so that's great. Love it. One, one for you. <laughs> Zero for the rest of us. That's great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 who is the celebrity couple that broke up? Because I have no clue. Is, there's was, not was, one. There's not one. He was joking. The joke oh. was, your butt cheeks are the celebrity couple. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I I get it. How are they still together? How are after they still all together? the crap they've been through? They've they've never been together. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so, that's the kind well, of what you can expect I mean, from the the voicemail line. Apparently, so right? You a- have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> All right, producer Brian, you've got uh, something you wanted to talk about the uh, newsletter. Yeah. So you know this this week in, or this month in the uh, Fat Five Fat Fraternity newsletter, I, I got some interesting news here. Um, yeah, and and just to back up, if you're not familiar with Fat Five Fat, is it is the fraternity of fat guys. So producer Brian and I uh, and Ryan, three fat guys, yeah. we are part of that fraternity. Yeah, that's the way the next podcast here. Um, so we go. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you saw the news, but this I believe it was this Monday, or maybe last Monday, uh, McDonald's released a new menu. Have you seen this? Ooh, I have not. Secret hacks menu. It's not secret anymore. Hmm. Um, so th- they've got some new things you can okay you can order. So I want to kind of st- start with the Ooh. most appealing one to me. There's something <laughs> called a hash we... brown McMuffin. Okay. So Ooh. they sell you basically it's a sausage McMuffin with egg, and you get a hash brown. You're supposed to put it on the sandwich. Not bad, right? Okay. I, could, I could go with that. Aaron, do you, you said you like that? You've had it. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, that one's that yeah. one's good. So here, let's find let's find another I like one here. on a McMuffin. Yeah, I love the McMuffin. So that's, mm. uh, not a fan. the the next one they have here is called a Crunchy Double. All right, I, I'm liking the noise of that. Um, so it, it's a double <laughs> cheeseburger, okay. and then you get an order of chicken nuggets and barbecue sauce to put on your cheeseburger. Hmm. Do you do meat, chicken, meat? Is that the order that we're doing? I believe you just take like the bottom bun off and you put the chicken nuggets there and then drizzle them with sauce and then put the sandwich. That's what the picture looks like here. Uh, All right. Yeah. Um, Then there's a surf and turf. Oh, no. You can can imagine where this is going. (laughs) Yes. Oh, no. I need that. I need that TikTok. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, It's a double cheeseburger. (laughs) <laughs> With a fillet of fish, uh, no, yeah, and no. then if that's not good enough for you, then you're then you're gonna love the lands, air, and sea. 
which is a Big Mac, oh, a McChicken, boy. and a oh, filet of fish all stacked on top of each other. Uh-uh. So would you no. do any of these? That's the question. Oh, we should go get all the hacks and then just try them. Right? <laughs> Ooh. That's, yeah, a, that's, I, a, that's a TikTok video there, right? There you Absolutely. Go. <laughs> I would probably do the, the, the double crispy. That doesn't sound horrible. If I have to yeah. do No, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. That. The fish in the in the, the surf and turf one. That's that's where I draw a line. I don't like the flat no, fish anymore. Anyway, but no, every once a year I'll get a hankering for the fillet of fish, and I'll go get it, and then I'll say to myself, "That was a bad mistake. I shouldn't have yeah. done that. That was awful." So, oh well. All right. So we are going to go to our guests. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring her on. She is in the green room. Yep. And. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm going to figure this stuff out eventually. How did that happen? <laughs> I was supposed there to be here. Anyway. We, we, we got, go. oh, we got two errands. Why do I have two errands? <laughs> Good yeah, grief. there's two errands. All right. I'll go, I'll come, I'm going to come on two here, guys, if that's okay. There we go. All right. There we go. go. <laughs> Finally learn how this hey, stuff Nancy, works. thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Hi, guys. Uh, Nancy, again, thank you so much for coming on. It is an honor to have you come on the show I've I've read your story. I've seen uh, the first chapter of your book. I haven't gotten to the rest of them, but I will definitely be ordering that. What an amazing story. And um, the first question, though, that I have for you, um, if you have to do it all by yourself, there's no help on it whatsoever, uh, which one would be the most intimidating for you? Uh, to climb Mount Everest or to prepare your taxes for 2021? Yeah, probably climb Mount Everest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am not a numbers guy or a tax guy. So for me, that's, a, that's my Mount Kilimanjaro. I can't, I can't look at numbers. I get confused. Oh, man. Well, Nancy, thank you again. Tell us uh, a little bit about your story because I, I really want to dive into that because it's so remarkable. Uh, well, not really that remarkable, but um, <clears throat> I was married. I got divorced. I was married 26 years, and that just blew me out of the water. So it took me a long time to get over it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I, be I was a personal trainer. I owned a gym, and then eventually I became a life coach. And uh, when I turned 60, which was such an ugly number, <laughs> um, I just thought I had to do something that was going to make that number not so bad and just be a number. So I chose to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I loved it. It was wow. amazing. Big. And I think <laughs> it just propelled me. You know, I wrote a book and then the book became an international yeah. bestseller and I'm a master coach. And I just think it's all about um, doing life scared and being okay and doing it anyway. Hmm. There's a ton to unpack there. Um, but can you tell us, so I've, I've announced like you're a certified integrative life coach through the Ford Institute. Um, you're Levine Life Coach uh, Academy, uh, again, uh, best-selling author. What are, what's the, what is an inter, uh, integrative, integrative life, life coach? coach? Yeah. What exactly does that mean? An integrative life coach. It's really, I'm a shadow coach. So I help people uncover the beliefs that are buried in their subconscious that they're not aware of, that we all have mm. from our childhood, that keep us stuck. So mm. I'm not good enough. I'm unworthy. I need to control everything to be safe. I need to be perfect to be loved. These are all some of the beliefs that are in our childhood that keep us stuck. Ooh. Oh, boy, there's a lot there. My dad's watching, so I'm probably not going to say too much on that. <laughs> you know but, what? Yeah, I mean, I'm a parent, too, and we you do the best you can. It, it's not about how good a yeah. parent you were. Your kids are always going to make meaning about things that you're not even aware of. And it's, you can't get through life without having shadow beliefs. So it's not really mm. necessarily, I don't know your dad personally. But sure. <laughs> I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that um, some of the things that happen to you are your interpretation, and then you make mm -hmm. a belief about it that's very disempowering. 
It's not necessarily mm. about your dad. Oh yeah, absolutely. My dad, my dad's a great dad. Um, but there, there is a lot of stuff because I'm going through therapy as well. There's a lot of stuff that I'm unpacking exactly. Like you said, is my interpretation of it. It's not necessarily he did anything uh, incorrectly. It was just how I interpreted things. So right. my kids yeah. do the work too. And sometimes they'll bring up something like, Oh, you won't believe this belief I have. And I'll hear it. And I'll be thinking to myself, you're kidding me. Like that's what you, <laughs> that's what you took away from that. So. Mm. I, you can't you can't take responsibility for how somebody else interprets something. Mm. And that also, I would imagine that that could also uh, come from spouses, from friends, not just parentals. Is that correct? No, no but, but it basically comes from the first 10 years of your life. So, for example, uh, okay. you could be seven years old and you're in class and you stand up and you talk and you misspell something, you say something wrong, and everybody mm. laughs at you. In that instant, you decide you're broken, you're not good enough, you're stupid, you need to stay quiet so you can be safe. It, it's just something that happens. These things happen mm. all the time. It doesn't mean that yeah. a lot of bad <laughs> doesn't go down that you really haven't made beliefs about. I, you know, I put myself on fire when I was five years old. I didn't know it till I was 50. That I had the belief that I wasn't safe alone. But it's the oh, perfect wow. thing for a little girl who was playing with a lighter and put herself on fire. Yeah, you're right. I wasn't safe alone. Yeah. So all of these beliefs are made to keep us safe as children. Stay hmm. quiet, stay small, stay safe. Um, but as an adult, they, they, they start to make you small. They stop working. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that will, you know, we try to do it for safety, you know, be quiet, don't jump, you know, don't go crazy, that kind of stuff. But then in the, 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 um, the interpretation or how they, how we take that in could be, wow, I've, I'm not a safe person or I'm not, you know, uh, safe or like you said, I'm not safe alone. Now that can be impactful in your adulthood. Absolutely. Right. And so there's always a gift in the belief. As a young Mm. woman, I always had a million friends and I've always had a man in my life. Um, But when I got divorced, I just I couldn't handle it. I didn't have the tools because that wounded child inside of me was like, whoa, Mm. you know, I'm not safe. Wow. But I was. And you you went through that probably in like in your uh, 40s, in your 40s. Do we. it feels like that usually around in the forties, that's when we get a major wake up call, whether it be a parent past or you go through a major life event or um, something's wrong with your health. It's, it's like that kind of the midlife crisis kind of have a wake up call in the forties. Um, is that, I mean, that seems like it's almost pre-programmed to happen. Well, put it to you this way, life happens. It's always going to happen. So you, it's the people who don't think it's going to happen, or they think Mm. they're doing everything right, so life is going to work out for them, that gets the biggest surprise. You know, knowing that stuff's going to come down the pike no matter how old you are, and then it's not about whether you fall or not, it's how long you stay down, and Mm. how often do you get back up. It, it's some, sometimes it's just really difficult to get back up. Do you have any tips, anything that, that you can say, any encouragement for those folks that, that may be down, that may feel like that they're, they're you know, just knocked out, that they don't want to get back up again? I think that life happens to everybody, and you have to know that you can't see the big picture, but that if you can trust, that like the universe is there for you, everything is going to work out. Whether you fall or not, that's what you needed. That was part of the Mm. evolutionary plan for you and your soul this time on earth. So you're not the general manager of your life. You can't really know what's going to happen. But if you Mm. can trust that there are lessons and gifts in everything that happens, it actually makes you more the observer than the reactor. and. Just because you're down right now doesn't mean you have to stay down. 
because shit happens to everybody. And <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, I've had a lot of, I've had an amazingly great life. And I've had cancer, I've been divorced, I've mm. lost a baby at the end of a pregnancy. I've had a lot of mm. things. It makes you who you are. And thinking that where you are right now is where you have to stay is not true. Mm. Uh, I, I usually ask the questions, but I want you guys, Aaron, Brian, if you guys have questions, please feel free. Or if any of uh, the viewers have any questions, please Put them in the chat. We'll ask those as well. Uh, Aaron, do you have anything before I move on? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just listening. I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's shaking her head. <laughs> like, yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's a thing in our society where, and I talked about this on the last show, is um, just to, to love yourself and to be... Um, accepting and that doesn't it seems like it's getting more steam and push that that's a healthy viable thing and something that we need to do but growing up that wasn't there like self-love was just something at least in 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 my community that wasn't something that was pushed how important is that self-love and trying to teach yourself to do that how do you do that Uh, so self-love and self-worth come from self-confidence and self-confidence comes from trying a lot of things and staying in alignment with what you tell yourself you're going to do. So whether you fail or not, if you say you're going to do something and you do it, or you have a goal and vision out there and you stay in alignment with it, you're going to have more self-love. If you actually aren't out there playing all out, living big, doing everything you can, staying in alignment with what you say you want, you're not going to have self-love. And I think we're a society that is very other reference. So we judge ourselves on how other people see us. Well, when you do that, Mm -hmm. you aren't going to have a lot of self-worth because on the one hand, you don't really show people who you really are. So then you, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, if they really knew who we were, they weren't gonna, then they wouldn't like us. So you have Absolutely. to like yourself. It's an inside job. It has to start with you. And then if you love yourself, if you find worth in yourself, that's what you exude out. We mirror ourselves to other people. You can't mm-hmm. just look out there. And you're also yeah, can't I mean, have self-love if you're not doing what you know you can be doing. You know, if you're not living up to your potential, if you're not using your gifts, if you're afraid and you're staying stuck and you're not moving forward, it's going to be hard to really love yourself. How do you use that fear of either the unknown or feeling like you're not going to be able to do this, that you're not good enough. How do you use that to cultivate, you know, the ability to do that? I have learned to become comfortable being uncomfortable. And that Mm. I know that anything I'm afraid to do, that's where my growth is. I'm going to come out the other side and I'm going to be the person who I didn't think I was so that I couldn't step up. Like, let's say I was afraid to do this podcast with you guys. I would have some fear, but I would do it anyway, knowing that when I came out the other side, it would make it easier for me the next time I had to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. And so when I was training for Mount Kilimanjaro, every single thing, I'd go down the double black diamonds on the other side of the mountain. I I did Tony Robbins and I walked on fire. I mean, every single thing I did, I would say, well, if you can't do this, Mm. then you're never going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And that's how I really live my life. Do it anyway. I I think one of the things, I'm I'm a new parent, um, and one of the things that I'm learning is I'm always so scared that I'm going to, mess something up or I'm not going to be able to, to handle it when she has a, a huge temper tantrum or whatever. Um, and by not handle it, just like gets very frustrated. <clears throat> but, but after I've gone through it, 
I realize, oh, you know, you've done it before. And so when that fear comes up, like, oh, you won't be able to handle it. I think back to say, oh, I've already done it before. And it, and I, and I came out the other side, like you were saying, and it was fine. So I'm starting to understand that concept of going through it. Also in my brain, I'm the worst case scenario type guy, like zombies are coming tomorrow. Are we going to be ready? Um, and, and so I'm learning it's the zombies aren't coming tomorrow. It's going to be okay. And my wife's the exact opposite. She's like, well, the zombies come, we'll have a party. And so, and so I'm trying to learn and lean into that, which has been so counter of my nature to do that. But again, it's part of that growth and learning to become a better person. Like you're, you're saying, you know, worry doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't save you. It doesn't make you more prepared. I mean, if you're worried about something, then, then try to take some action that would make whatever you're afraid that's going to happen less likely. Mm -hmm. But I just say to my clients, think about what's the worst case scenario. And then if the worst case scenario happens, what are you going to do? And once they see that they're going to survive, well, then let that all go. You know, it's not going to help you. And my best advice as for you as a parent is let your daughter try a million things and fail as often as she can. Because especially with women, with girls, we try one thing, we do it forever until it's like dead in the water and we don't try a lot of things. And when you fail, you're afraid to try something new. Hmm. The juice is in the journey. I I raised my granddaughters Hmm. to like, Nana, I was bigger, better, braver today. And I'm like, what to do, honey? Like, what did you try that you were afraid of? So the conversation should always be about what were you afraid to do and did it anyway, not about how well they did the thing they, you know. I'm so proud of you for being brave. That'll preach. Wow. Um, So tell tell us what it means to be bigger, better, braver. What does that, what all does that entail? It means... um, Always. I think I've got the bigger part down, so we can skip that. Yeah. One. <laughs> Skipping the bigger. Okay, so whatever bigger means to you, right? I'm it could kidding. be getting in a job, getting out of a job, losing fifty pounds, um, moving across the country, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, starting a new job, running a five k, anything, whatever bigger means to you. Everyone knows mm-hmm. what stepping out of their comfort zone would look like. And being braver is just taking your fear by the hand and moving forward in faith to know that that's where the growth is. That's where the juice is. That's where life is. Yeah. You know, the, the saddest thing to me is people who live in their fears and can't seem. I mean, if you're waiting for a fearless state, that's never going to happen. None of us are ever going to be in a fearless state. So you have to be able to move forward with your fears. And most of our disempowering beliefs from our childhood, underneath that, there are these fears. So it's really great to unpack all of this. That's why you hire somebody like me or buy my book and do it with my book or my course, any of those, um, so that you can move forward. Like, please don't stay stuck in your fear. Don't don't live a little life because you're allowing your fears to keep you back. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there's there's a lot there. Um, so besides buying your book or having you as a mentor, like where where do you start? Like if you decide, if our listeners decide, I don't want to live in fear anymore. What is What's the number one or the first step that you take in that journey? Honestly, it, it sounds like really self-serving, but I would say buy my book because yeah, sure. the, this work is not something you can easily do on your own. You're not, you have things that are in your unconscious um, mind, so they're in your subconscious. You don't know you have them. What you do know is that you're not happy as you want to be, or you can't stay in alignment with what you tell yourself you're going to do, or you are a self-sabotager, 
or you're an old yeah. people pleaser, an overdoer, conflict avoider. You know when you're those things. And yes. if that's how you're living your life, then you can work with somebody so that you don't have to keep that going. Mm. And you don't have to hire me. There's a million coaches out there. Yeah. You mentioned faith. How has faith played a role in your process? Well, you know, I didn't grow up with this belief that, like, the universe had my back oh, and that mm. everything happened for a reason. But once you do cultivate that belief, you can relax in everything about your life or your family's life or your friend's life. You can give up being the general manager of the universe because there's a bigger source than you out there. And mm. as long as you, like, I don't think I'm never going to fail again. You know, I could fail today, right? I, I never, yeah. I, it's not about that. It's about knowing that whatever happens, I'll be okay. And if something happens to my children, well, then that's their journey. I can't mm -hmm. save anybody from what's going to happen. I can give them my advice. I can have compassion. But I can no longer be in charge. Sure. I can't control everything to keep anybody safe. My clients who don't do anything or are home all day trying to keep their family safe, I'm like, if I thought that you're staying home and worrying all day would keep them safe, I'd say, go for it. Do it. Sure. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Worry doesn't keep anything from happening. Mm. But it keeps you plain small. Mm. Why, do we think, why do you think that we attach failure to self-worth so much? Oh, self-worth is such a big conversation. because. Self-worth is also um, totally connected to your net worth. So if you don't think you're worthy, mm. then you also don't ask for what you deserve. You don't ask for the raise. You don't push yourself. You don't do a lot of things. So I, I, I talk a lot about worthiness. And the thing about worthiness is that whatever it is, that makes you feel worthy when you don't excel in that one area, even if you excel in other areas, it brings down your self worth. Yeah, so, yeah. so there's your ideal self, and then your then there's your self image. Both of those mm. are just an interpretation, but the discrepancy between how far away your ideal self is from your self image equals your self worth. Mm. So wow. if the area that you're looking at your life in is where you're not worthy, like if, I mean, I know I'm rocking in a lot of areas in my life. And sure. yet if, if my body image controls my self-worth and I get on the scale and I'm up three pounds, well, like I'm in the garbage that day, right? So yeah. it really depends on what you decide is the mm. most important aspects of your worthiness and then where you wow. where you are on the spectrum of being close to your ideal self wow Ooh, that's that's a lot i mean it's it's you know trying to process that in my own life is like oh i've got a lot of i've still it's got a, a lot of work to do I yeah. yeah, it's a huge conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Worthiness is a huge conversation. Yeah, I always feel like I'm not worthy at all of anything. And um, I mean, we're just going to have a therapy session. I'll just send you my copay. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so seriously, what's underneath that? Mm. Yeah, like it's, it's a, a bunch of failure uh, for me. Am not feeling good enough, not feeling like um that i'm I match up to what I should be I think is is a lot of that that's the ideal self, right yeah. but so here's yeah. the other thing: if you have a childhood belief that you're not good enough, then life brings you experiences to prove 
your limitations. Mm. So mm. every single time something happens that makes you feel unworthy, you say, see, yeah. I really am unworthy. When you uncover where the beliefs came from, and then you give yourself a new empowering belief, you will stop attracting people and situations into your life to prove that mm. disempowering belief. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, there's step, there's step one. <laughs> Buy the book and then get rid right. of everybody else. I'm just kidding. Huh. Uh, Nancy, where, if you have, you know, one takeaway that our listeners need to take away from, from your experiences um, or your book or what have you, what would that, that one takeaway be, that one nugget? I think that the juice is in the journey. It's not yeah. in whether you succeed or not. It's whether you step in. You know, mm. nobody, you know, there's, I, I read something about uh, the last person in a race still beats the guy on the couch. <laughs> right. Right. That's great. Yeah. So just step in, you know, do something every day that you're afraid to do. Hmm. That's great stuff. Um, so where can people buy the book? Where can people get a hold of you? Uh, where can people contact you? So you can buy my book on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, anywhere in the world, even on my website. Uh, you can buy the written book or the audible. Um, my website is nancypicardlifecoach.com, and I'm on Instagram, I'm on Clubhouse, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. So Nancy Picard Life Coach finds me everything. And I offer a free discovery calls so that if something I've said today makes you feel like, oh, yeah, I need more of that, just yeah. send me an email. That's awesome. Uh, Nancy, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to dive into that book, no doubt. I'm going to order that tonight. Leave and me a review. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a Yelp review, five-star okay. Yelp review. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for Absolutely. having me. Thank you so much. Have a great right. night. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Wow. Guys, there's a ton in, in that like little nugget of stuff. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm. I've just gone to see yeah. Maria, <laughs> my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm going to raise. By the way, I'm going to say that right now. I, I was race. that an actual recording of a therapy session? I think so. Or I, I think so. <laughs> How did y'all find that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, producer Brian? I said I'm going to need a raise after. Like that's that's what I got yeah. out of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll add to your raise a Ricola. Oh, my sports, bro. actually, I, I have a whole bag of from when I lost my voice. So, <laughs> wow, that any, was any takeaways from that? Well, I like that quote that the juice is in the journey. She said that, and she had a couple of little uh, fun little packages, little quotes there that yeah. are kind of heavy hitters, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Were you gonna say something here? I was just going to say, like, when she was saying, like, uh, do it anyway, I had that as a screensaver on my phone. Um, like, I feel like uh, I'm the type of person that lives in that fear. Like, I let it kind of fuel me. Mm. <laughs> so I really appreciate what she was saying. Like, I guess I never could put into words what that, like, was for me and, like, how that drives me. And I think, like, her saying that was, like, okay yeah like i feel like i kind of do that like i try to push myself even if i am afraid like and step into you know whatever is i'm scared of or and just kind of let that be like i'm gonna rise up to the challenge mm. moment <laughs> and i i appreciate that like yeah the way she worded it it felt like it rung true for me good awesome yeah yeah um yeah so yeah. It, it's bigger better braver uh if you want to look at that it, all the her information will be on our guest information on um on the on the sfpradio.com website you can look in there uh, 
producer Brian, I know you put in the show notes, yep. but we also have a cool like little thing on the, the website. If you click on the link, all their information is there too. So and they've got like their pictures and all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, and more information that we have on our site. So <clears> or <throat> on the show notes. So check that out as well. I mean, guys, I mean, oh. she, she went through, as, as she said, went through a lot of stuff, 60 years old and climbed the, the mountain. Um, and I know she gives a, if you sign up, you can get a free, um, first, the first chapter of her book. And of course they're going to ask, well, what's your Mount Kilimanjaro? Um, mine is usually means like, can I get up and go back to the fridge for more ice cream? Uh, which I probably need to stop that. I'm going to try, <laughs> try to be a little <laughs> bit better because I got to get ready for our <laughs> SFP 5k. Um, but it, it is a question of what are you afraid of and how can you lean into that a little bit? So, um, I guess tomorrow I'll have to step into something that I'm afraid of. So we'll try that. Yeah. That, that was an interesting thing. Cause you know, I, I, I think I've traumatized my children by making them do things they're afraid of uh. and it hasn't always worked well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I do enjoy the fact of it's not I, one of the biggest quote that one of the things I took around is not, did you succeed? But what did you learn in the process of doing that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, su- success isn't the big arrival. It's, it's again, the process of getting there. And if you f- succeed or fail, either way you win. So mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up our show. We got a show, a quick show tonight. Um, next week, I, we'll see. It's our Valentine's Day show. Um, I, I haven't asked everybody yet, so this may or may not happen. But what I'd like to happen is our, we have our spouses on the show, and we'll play oh. a newlywed game and see uh, and hear hear the love stories. Um, and how everybody met and all lovey dovey and the best parts of being married and mm. the worst parts of being married and, and all that fun stuff. Um, <laughs> oh, if nothing else, if Sounds we can terrible. make, if we can make <laughs> magic man and his wife, uh, come on the show and tell us how they met, that would make my night. Oh, so, <laughs> oh, good night. It's the greatest story ever told. Uh, oh. <laughs> so we'll leave Farmers that as only, suspense. Right? Yeah, pretty close. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. My wife has actually, this is some behind the scenes stuff. My wife has two versions of the story of how we actually met. So we'll see oh. which one she tells uh, if she's able to make it on the show. Is so it depending on which personality is in charge at this time? Is that how that works? Or is it. It's it's who the audience is and how oh. acceptable it may okay. be. Okay, <laughs> I get it. Okay, so, all right. It should be should be interesting. So hopefully we can make that work. Uh, if not, we'll just be talking about love and marriage and all that fun stuff. Mm. So oh boy, there's a show about strong. that back in the nineties, right? Uh, what what show? That, was, that was the song started. It was uh, Married with Children. Oh, remember? Married with Children. I was going to get the song started with Love and Marriage. It was like a Sinatra yeah. song. Yeah. The only thing I paid attention to on that show, honestly, is Kelly Bundy. That's all I paid attention to. I didn't know <laughs> what the she show was, was icon, about. So. Yeah, yeah. She still is an icon. <laughs> Understandable. She still is. Christina Applegate, <laughs> you got it going on. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Southern Pride Philosophy Podcast. And as always, keep looking up. <laughs>